Hello, this is Jeff Weiss back with um, material on sexual propagation, Unit 6 in the Introduction to Horticulture, talking about seed formation, germination, and regulation. Um, upon completion of this unit, you should be able to discuss the process of propagating and the regulations around commercial seed production. Uh, the factors that affect the viability and longevity of seeds, especially seeds in storage. Describe the environmental conditions that affect seed germination and to be able to discuss methods for improving seed germination and plant performance. Uh, before we go on, I want to just um, mention that I'm trying to take your feedback trying to take your feedback to heart about uh, the, the length and the kind of boring nature of some of these lectures. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break uh, today's lecture into three parts, uh, try to keep it lively, and uh, I'm also investigating uh, the use of a different uh, recording tool um, that will allow you to move around the recording with a little more flexibility. However, um, this tool that I'm currently using, Camtasia Relay, is integrated into the CLC um, uh, IT environment. So it may not be easy to change and I can't guarantee it, but I'll try. We'll see if we can make this better. So um, key terms and concepts uh, will all come into play during the lecture, so I will not uh, uh, talk about any of these right now. Um, and just to kick off the material, um, there's three big uh, reasons why uh, horticulturalists propagate uh, plants through seeds. Uh, the first is to preserve um, the genetic material, the germplasm, um, for future uh, research or for use in uh, planting. So uh, breeding and cultivating plants both require uh, a supply of seeds in order to move forward. It's the raw material, um, as you know, for uh, most of the horticultural plants, although, as we'll study next week, um, they can also be, um, be spread by um, asexual propagation. Uh, but seeds are uh, the main uh, um, generators used to produce crops. Um, the amount of seeds can be increased um, through um, seed production and then distributed uh, for use in crop production. And we're going to talk about the steps in uh, uh, developing commercial seed in a few slides. And then um, the third big purpose of uh, seed propagation is for use in uh, landscaping. Uh, many of the plants grown for commercial or aesthetic uh, or functional purposes are grown from seeds. And um, my little video um, that, that I've recorded is uh, a discussion of some of the uses of seeds that I produce for um, seeds for seedlings, for sale, and for propagation of, uh, of plants on our grounds at the Nature Center where I work. So all, all of these are important purposes of seeds. So uh, a little uh, review from last week, a reminder about the genetics of seeds. Uh, first of all, um, uh, homogeneous crosses uh, yield a consistent phenotype. Um, they all look the same. All the plants uh, look the same in the F1 generation, but when those um, uh, plants are crossed with each other, they yield variable phenotypes in the F2 generation. And so it's these hybrids, since they're heterozygous, the only way to propagate consistently is through uh, use of homozygous seeds or uh, sexual or vegetative propagation, which again um, yield genetically identical plants and is the subject of next week's lecture. So what is a seed? A seed is a little miracle. It's a miniature plant ready to spring into life. Um, has Use of seeds has critical um, 
advantages of convenience and ease of handling, uh, easy to uh, sew mechanically and store than any of the other propagation methods. And uh, here is a cross section of a seed showing the internal functions um, and the uh, cotyledons and the radical um, are the main um, uh, parts that become the visible parts of the plant uh, uh, and are form uh, the embryonic plant inside a seed. Uh, another review slide uh, discusses pollination, fertilization, and double fertilization. These are the critical steps in going from um, one or more parent plants exchanging genetic material uh, into a seed which is uh, a fertilized um, embryo ready to form a new plant of the next generation. The next topic is seed diversity. Uh, I want to talk about it at two different levels. First of all, uh, the diversity of the genetic material inside a seed forms because of the union of materials from uh, two different sex cells, usually two different uh, plants, although some uh, plants self-fertilize. But this is the way that uh, um, traits are mixed and uh, uh, genetic diversity is uh, spread, uh, spread between um, uh, plants over generations. And then the other type of diversity is the visual diversity, the, the uh, variation of phenotypes, the wide variety of different shapes and sizes of seeds, how they um, disperse themselves, uh, their appearances, uh, how they work uh, as fleshy or dry to um, disperse themselves using um, uh, wind or water or animal uh, animals who eat the fruit and uh, disperse the seed. Amazing. Um, both levels of seed diversity are just totally amazing to me, which is part of the reason why I love plants so much. Now in producing seed for commercial purposes, there's quite a formalized uh, process, uh, legal regulations and uh, organizations that are set up at the state level to govern and um, make uh, the purchase of seeds a uh, reasonably um, consistent and um, reliable process. In any event, the when a um, new seed is bred, a very small amount of the seed is produced from the breeding program and it's uh, shared with uh, uh, the next generation, which is the foundation seed. So that um, seed is grown under the direct supervision of researchers and that generation of seed is then uh, distributed to uh, registered growers and, and grown and that seed is harvested as registered seed and finally um, the registered growers um, uh, produce certified seed uh, which is uh, then ins inspected and approved by the certifying agency for sale to the public or to growers. And each of these uh, generations of seeds is grown under supervision and has uh, uh, seals of approval that uh, describe the um, uh, or, or document the conditions under which the seed was grown and allow the uh, information about the uh, original seed to be traced. So seed law um, are um, acts which regulate the label, labeling, coloring, sale, offering, and transport, transportation for sale of agricultural vegetable flower seeds. And they're governed by an association of seed control officers and based on standards set forth in the uniform state seed law. So um, federal law uh, passed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture 
is implemented by the states through this uh, uniform state seed law and each state has its own um, uh, regulations and laws and governing organizations with respect to seeds. I'll bet you didn't know all of this was going on uh, when you uh, purchase seeds um, but it is a very highly regulated um, industry um, and, and it should be because it's um, careless uh, use or labeling of seeds uh, can have big consequences for farmers and growers relying on the um, on the purity and the um, viability of the seeds they purchase. So what happens uh, when seeds germinate will be the topic of my next sec session and I'm going to end part one on this uh, on this note.